Hey everyone, today we're going to treat spider mites with neem and look at what happens under the microscope. So we've got a fuzzy leaf philodendron here. This is varicosum. And if you know philodendrons or anthuriums, you know that they love spider mites or rather spider mites love them. If it has a fuzzy or velvety leaf, you probably have spider mites. It's important to make sure you don't only look at the top, but you look at the undersides also. So today we're gonna look at some of these leaves under the microscope and see what happens when you apply 3% azadiractin, which is a main active ingredient in neem to these leaves that contain lots and lots of spider mites. And neem treats just about any pest in your garden, just make sure it contains 3% as a directin. I have my neem concentrate here and I've mixed it up at nine mLs of this, which is the 3% per quart of water. So it creates this cloudy like mixture and we're gonna apply it with this dropper onto the leaf gently because the spray which we typically use would just be too disruptive to the microscope. This is also gonna prove the relevance of a spider mite drench over just spraying. So we have our sample leaf here from the plant. I've taken out a little slot of the leaf that we put onto the slide. So we're gonna look at it now and see these spider mites actively moving and see what happens when they're applied the neem solution directly on them. So so here we have the top side of the varicosum leaf. You can see a lot of the spider mite tracks and the bite marks, those little yellow dots. And there's not a lot of activity except for this guy hanging out here. But this is going to be very starkly contrasted compared to the bottom side of this leaf. Yeah, this is the bottom side of this varicosum leaf. You can see all the activity of these spider mites and even their babies running around. You can see the red striping of the varicosum on the bottom and a bit of like a spider mite graveyard on the upper right side. So yeah, it's pretty gross, but showing the importance of why you need to neem on the undersides and we'll do that now. So here we're applying the neem directly to the underside of the leaf. As you can see, the importance of the neem directly contacting the spider mite, they pretty much stop moving immediately. I think water would do the same, but the neem oil really suffocates the mite out. You can see the more adult two-dotted spider mite are there with the dark spots on them, and the adolescents are more of a translucent body type. They look like little spiders and you can see the neem oil on the top of the film there and that's what really suffocates them out. Here again, the neem has to contact the spider mite directly and it will slow down the reproduction of the spider mite. Here we see the eggs actually, those little yellow dots there. Again, more of the oil from the neem. So as you saw under the microscope, it's super important to not only spray the top sides of the leaf, but really spray the bottom sides of the leaf. As you could see, a lot of the spider mites and their eggs were on the bottom sides of the leaves actively eating, creating those holes which you actually see on the top sides of the leaf. And as we saw from the video, remember that spider mites only die from direct contact with the neem. So that neem drench, taking the plant and dunking it upside down in like a bucket of this neem water is really the best way to do it or just really douse those plants up and down. Remember it's organic, remember it's safe to use around your family, pets, and it doesn't have an effect against us humans. It's been scientifically tested and proven that it's very safe around humans. So when you spray, make sure to spray the undersides and the top sides of your leaves, especially your fuzzy fillows, at least twice a week. So I hope you guys enjoyed the microscope videos. If you wanna see more topics about this, please click the like button down below and consider subscribing. And let me know in the comments, do you wanna see other things checked out under the microscope? I'd really like to see what BTI does against the fungus gnat larvae at the microscopic level. Also to see what hydrogen peroxide does to pythium in root rot situations. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next Saturday for another video. Mm -hmm.